welcome along guys and welcome to a little bit of a moan now i did a i did a rocket ramblings video a few months ago where i went out in the rocket just i was just testing my camera and i had a bit of a moan and i mentioned i'd been ranting about electric vehicles and electric bikes but the camera wasn't recording a few people said oh i'd love to have heard, heard your rant about electric vehicles well i'm uh, here it is <laughs> This will probably be the last time I'll ever, but I probably never will get my hands on an electric vehicle again after I tell you what my true thoughts are on them. So uh, join, join me, grab a cup of tea, better get the popcorn as well, because this is going to be a little bit controversial. See you after the intro. Listen to that. That is the, that young man is the sound of a, a petrol straight four motorcycle. <laughs> In 20 years time, you may not be able to experience such sounds as this because electric is coming. As we all know, and as the government keeps telling us, you know, electric's coming buy electric vehicles buy electric vehicles now i see some major fundamental problems with electric vehicles you know mainly let, let's cover the the basic obvious ones first afternoon so of course the main thing with these lithium ion batteries which electric cars and electric bikes have these days is you know the, the range the range you can get from these batteries and if you follow the manufacturer's guidelines you've got to keep them between 20 and 80 percent so if you run them under 20 percent or if you charge them over 80 percent it's detrimental to your battery's performance so basically your battery doesn't like that and it loses a little bit of performance and what they will tell you the figures are it, it's between three and four percent per year your battery degrades you know so you lose that range by three or four percent every year and now if you keep it between 20 and 80 percent you can improve that but realistically because people can't always do that it's about three or four percent every year your battery loses that range so what that means is that after your vehicle is 10 years old because a lot of these manufacturers of cars they, they give you a 10 year warranty on your battery your 10 year warranty on your battery so after 10 years time let's say you're losing three percent of the battery's efficiency every year in 10 years time your battery's only got 70 percent of the range it once had when it was new so really after 10 i mean already that they're, they're barely enough range aren't they if, if you deduct 70 if you deduct 30 percent from that range you know you're not left with much and really you're going to need a new battery at that point so after 10 years you're going to need a new battery realistically because you just you know push on a bike you just, you know you're going to need a new battery and it may even be worse than that that three or four percent you know it depends how you charge it how you look after it but so in three years to, in 10 years you need a new battery a new battery on an electric vehicle is between around five thousand and eight thousand pounds to have fitted so it's basically like buying a, a car and saying yeah in 10 years time you're going to need a whole new engine you know you're what a new engine yeah only last 10 years I mean, it's, it's and that's just the battery that how long are these electric motors going to last no you know what what's the expected lifespan of the electric motors are they going to last 10 years maybe you need a new battery and electric motor in 10 you must just buy a new car just sling it get a new one and unfortunately that is the mentality these days isn't it we're, we're a consumer society and things aren't made to <laughs> i'm sounding really old here aren't i but just things aren't made to last these days like they used to i mean everything's throw away a tv new tv you can't really fix them now you just throw it away get a new one and unfortunately it looks like electric vehicles are going to be the same throw it away in 10 years time i mean that is not green that is not being green, is it? I mean, you, Volvo did a, they were very open with their electric vehicles and they said, you have to do 80,000 miles 
on this electric vehicle before it becomes carbon neutral. So you have to do 80,000 miles before the you know, the footprint of build the, 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 the environmental damage from building the electric car, I mean all that mining they have to do for the minerals for the battery, actually building it, and obviously any greenhouse gases used to produce electricity to run it, so it depends what country, we'll come, we'll come on to the grid in a minute. That's, that's another discussion. But we're just talking about the vehicles in a minute. So Volvo say 80,000 miles until your vehicle becomes carbon neutral. So really you can't even say with a straight face that these electric vehicles are good for the environment. They're green because you've got to do 80,000 miles until, until it becomes green. Nice little uh, Harry Potter there. And then it's probably been ruined, ruined anyway, you need a new battery by then, and you're back to square one. So 80,000, who's going to do 80,000 miles in an electric car? They haven't got, I mean, that, it's just not, if you're doing a lot of miles, you don't buy an electric car, do you? Because you can't do a lot of miles in an electric car, you go and buy a diesel. So to do 80,000 miles in an electric car is a hell of a lot of miles, and it'll probably take you beyond the 10 years your battery's going to last. So you're going to need a new battery before the 80,000 miles is, is done and you've used it anyway. And of course, if it wasn't for PCP, no one in their right mind would buy an electric car. The only reason they're selling them is because of PCP. So after three or five years on the PCP deal, you hand it back, you know. No one would buy one because what are they going to be worth in 10 years' time? How much is your electric vehicle going to be worth when the battery is out of warranty and it's only, going to be doing, it's only going to have 70% of the range it did when you first bought it. So electric vehicles are really, really expensive. And, you know, second-hand, I, I haven't looked at second-hand prices of electric vehicles, but I think... I do apologise, my, uh, my battery ran out. <laughs> How apt when I'm talking about electric vehicles that my battery runs out of my GoPro. Anyway, it amused me. So where was I? What was I talking about? Can't remember. So as far as the, you know, the range goes, what they say, you've got to keep it between 20 and 80%. And if you do that on an electric bike, so let's concentrate a little bit more on electric bikes. Bruce Smart, Teapot One, he took the new Energica Rebel around the UK, around the four corners of the UK, and he was doing, you know, sticking within that rule of between 20 and 80%, he was actually managing about 50 miles. So every 50 miles, he was having to turn up on an electric footing station, an electric charging point, you know, one that has the fast charge, DC, so you can do the charge within about 30 minutes, 20 minutes. But he was getting 50 miles between charge stations. 50 miles! That is just not good enough. What good is 50 miles for anybody? And at the moment, you know, the state of the... I know there's so much money being invested by the government every year, you know, be, making the grid better, you know, the charging... Uh, charging better, the charging architecture you've got out there. But as more people buy electric vehicles, the more chargers are being used, you know. And they reckon that 10% of the chargers out there are actually broken. So, so out of all the charges which are deployed, 10% of those are broken. And because of the way the UK government has sort of awarded these contracts to these, you know, electric charging point contractors, everybody's got their own standards, you know. So you've got the Teslas have their own chargers, just for Teslas. You've got all these other smaller charging people, you've got to be registered with apps. And, you know, I've been, I've been for this before in one of my videos when I borrowed, you know, electric bikes trying to charge the things. So, you know, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. What the government has let be implemented is just a mess. So, you know, there's a lot more work needed on the actual infrastructure to support everyone getting an electric vehicle. When me and Bruce did our trip around London on, on the electric bikes, our big hunts, you know, we put up a, a shell garage which had an electric charging point. But, you know, it had two cables, but only one, you could only charge one vehicle. And there was countless people coming in in their electric cars waiting to get to the single charge point. You know, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. So there needs to be a lot more money invested in the actual charging infrastructure to bring it up to spec, so of course everyone's going to have an electric vehicle. And then let's look at the grid, you know, the green energies. I mean, the whole reason for this going electric is because 
Well, the, 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 the global warming, etc. You know, the energy crisis. Yeah. Okay. Global warming. You know. Let's have renewable energies. I actually watched a couple of videos from a nuclear physicist <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah, she was quite attractive, so it did make it a bit easier to follow. But you know, the let's talk about sort of the, uh, you know, the the wind generators. The wind generators. I mean, there can't be anything more green than harvesting wind energy. I mean, it sounds fantastic, doesn't it? But it's not all rosy because those wind generators last about 15 years, roughly, and you can't recycle any of them. So those massive blades, I mean, the size of those blades, they're like 100 feet long, one of those uh, blades, some of those uh, big wind, wind generators, you can't recycle them. So they go into landfill. So all of those windmills you see are going into landfill. All of those massive blades, they're just going into landfill. I mean, how, how green is that? All these offshore wind farms, you see them offshore, not interfering with anybody, they're out at sea. What harm can that do? Because they're out in the ocean, the amount of rust, the amount of corrosion, the amount of visits, you know, boats having to go out, diesel being burnt to maintain those, to stop them rusting away. You know, it's unbelievable. It's not as green as you might think. What about solar energy? Surely solar energy you stick a solar panel out, sun's on it, what harm can that do? Well, then they're non-recyclable. Again, they're not recyclable. California, 20 years ago, they made a big effort and they rolled out a lot of solar panels. They've now reached their lifespan of 20 years and now they've got to be taken down. And what do you think's happening to them? They're going into landfill. And with solar panels, they've got toxins in, which aren't recyclable. So there's solar panels going into landfill seeping dangerous toxins into the ground you know it's just it's just all it's not been thought about it's still not been considered if you've had solar panels on your on your roof you know a few years ago they're really pushing it get free solar panels they've got a 15 20 year lifespan what happens when those panels are useless you know you're not going to take them down the tip <laughs> you're not going to be able to i couldn't even take my plasterboard to the tip without being charged 10 pound a sheet to dispose of it you're not going to be able to take your solar panels to the tip and get rid of them. It's going to cost you, I don't know how much, to, to, get, to pay for those to be recycled. So it's just not been thought about. And all the green energy is just... One of the greenest energies is nuclear power. You know, this is what the nuclear physicist was saying. Nuclear energy is one of the greenest energies. OK, until there's some sort of accident. <laughs> but these days, I mean, you know, as long as you don't build them by the sea and they're properly maintained, you know, the latest nuclear power plants are incredibly safe. And no one wants them on their doorstep. No one wants them on their doorstep, obviously. You know, if they wanted to build a nuclear power station next to my house, I wouldn't be too impressed. Nobody would, but build them in the right places. And the actual waste produced, OK, you've got radioactive toxins or radioactive material, you know, which, which has to be disposed of. But they can dispose of that now. They, they basically get a mountain range, tunnel down 500 metres into the mountain, put the radioactive rods within a, a copper core, then surrounded by a steel core. Then that goes into this 500 metre down rock and then they pour a load of cat litter around it. <laughs> All the same stuff cat litter is made of, sort of an absorbent material to soak the moisture in. So the hard things are sat in a soft cushion, you know, against the rocks. And it sits there for 20,000 years, and then it's safe. The toxins in your, in your blooming solar panels, they sit there for 20,000 years, they're still as toxic as they were the day they were in the ground. So, and the amount of recycled material from the nuclear power station is tiny. The amount of radioactive material actually produced it's tiny in compared to the, what's been chucked into landfill from, you know, renewable energies. So it's not, you know, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. And I know the government, what happened 10, 15 years ago, the government was saying, buy diesel cars. They're much greener for the environment. Buy a diesel car. And everyone went out and bought a diesel car. 10 years later, diesels are bad. Diesels are bad. You've got to buy electric cars now. It's, it's all, for the government, it's all about awarding contracts to their mates, making backhanders, you know, it's all, 
it's all wrong it's all corrupt they're, they're pushing electric vehicles now giving these electric contracts to their their mates you know making massive kickbacks it's all wrong oil the price of oil at the moment is through the roof you know it's, it's a cartel that manages the oil prices the, 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 the oil companies have had record profits and how much the, the petrol's through the roof at the pumps it's, it's all wrong I mean the price of the price of crude oil is fixed by the by the oil companies you know they say hang on a minute it's like a car teller them decide the price it's illegal you know it's, it's it, it, a cartels are normally illegal apart from if you're an oil company you're allowed a cartel and they basically decide the price of the oil it's all wrong it's all wrong where's my tinfoil hat but yeah back on subject electric vehicles for me, the final straw, I mean, I get quite a lot of invoice to test electric bikes and everything, and I give them the go, and there's some electric bikes I've tried which are really good bikes. See, they're really good bikes. There's nothing wrong with the bikes. The issue I have is around the batteries and, you know, all of the range. The bikes themselves are very good, very engaging, some of them, but the range just isn't there, and the infrastructure, for me, it just isn't there yet. I don't think the, you know, the, the uh, lithium-ion batteries, I think it's going to be a solid-state battery. There's a few patents, there's a lot of companies working on solid-state batteries, which will overcome a lot of those issues. You get like three times the range, you can charge them three times as fast, and they're actually about a, a third as light, so they're much lighter as well. That's, that's a different story. That's a different story, but with the current, current lithium-ion technology, where the battery is degrading, well, they're a fortune to replace. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work for me. So I have to see. I mean, there's also other things. You know, you've got the, uh, what do they call it? The synthetic fuels. You know, there's synthetic fuels out there which can be produced. But to produce a synthetic fuel for your ICE vehicle, actually, it needs a lot of electricity to do that. A lot of electricity to produce the chemical reaction to make that synthetic fuel. So you could say, well, you might as well just put that electricity directly into a battery and run an electric car. But it's possible, it's coming. Hydrogen, you know, it's all coming, but I don't think the current electric uh, vehicles we have with lithium-ion batteries are the future. They're not the future. And what really did it for me was when they've released these touring electric bikes. You know, it's, oh, shut the road is closed here, look. Access only beyond this point. I have to go this way. These uh, these touring electric bikes. And if you ever heard of an oxymoron, a touring electric bike, a bike which can do 50 miles between refills. I'm sorry, that is not a touring bike. That is not a touring machine. You know that that for me was the final nail in the coffin of of ridiculousness for electric motorcycles. <laughs> Ooh, a touring machine which does 50 miles between recharges. Behave. Get a grip, will you? It's been slightly uh, retuned so you get less power and you get a little, you get a bit more range out of it. Well, I don't, oh, you get, oh, you, oh, you might get 70 miles between refills. Oh, 70 miles between refills or charges. It's not good enough. So there we go, that's my little rant about electric vehicles. It's been bugging me for a little while, this. You know, there's just, they just don't make sense. They do not make sense. The only ones which make sense is scooters, little commuter vehicles. Little commuter vehicles, cheap, well, as cheap as they can be, you know, low powered, they do, you know, they're, they're under miles, you can get to work on it, you get home, charge it up. Yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. Let me know what you think in the comments. I know this is going to be a bit, a bit controversial. This probably means I'm not no longer going to get on any electric vehicles. <laughs> but I don't care. I don't care. We've got to embrace these petrol-powered beauties while we can, before they're taken away. We've got to make the most of them. It's too early to go electric yet. Make the most of your petrol-powered bikes. Wait until the technology catches up and the practicality catches up. It's just not there yet for me. So uh, there we go. There's my little... Uh, I'm getting off my soapbox now. 
Let me know what you think in the comments below and let me know if you agree with me, you disagree with me. Let's get a bit of a, a communication. I mean, I'm, no, I'm not an expert. I've done a little bit of research. Maybe I'm wrong. If you know better, tell me, am I wrong? Because what I see at the moment is just corruption, misinformation, nonsense. So uh, let me know if you think I'm, I'm right or wrong in the comments. And uh, there we go. There was my electric rant. You've heard it at last. See you later, guys.